Hey, Alex, do you want to know what uh, makes me an angry? A angry? Yeah. <laughs> what makes me angry? An a- uh, a- angry. Nazis. <laughs> are, are, are what makes me an, an angry uh you know i'm sorry excuse me hold on hold on is this you know what continue continue go ahead you know, the, the, this is there, there are two primary offenders of this one of which i think you guessed already but the other one you don't know about i've had i've had multiple run-ins with grammar nazis very recently and they've both They've both involved one particular symbol, which I think is also a sub makes me an angry. Uh, fucking semicolons. Delete them. Erase them from the keyboard. <laughs> fucking take the keyboard off. T- take the key off. Fucking throw it in the fire. You know what? <laughs> you know what? Everybody, here's my challenge. Here's my challenge to the listeners at home. If you show me proof that you pried the semicolon key off of your keyboard and burned it, I will PayPal you $5. Get, get the hashtag burn the semicolon. Send me a video on Twitter with the hashtag burn the, the semicolon. Burn your semicolon key from your keyboard, and I will give you five dollars on PayPal. That is my promise to you. That I will old act now. I will only do it for four people because I'm not a rich man. Uh, but if you're one of the first four people to burn your semicolon key, I will give you five dollars on PayPal. Now, the, listen. Who the fuck needs semicolons? Who needs them? What are they used for? What the, g- explain to me, Alex, as a completely unrelated third party that has nothing to do with this, please explain to me what a semicolon is used for. It is used to denote something that is related to the sentence, but not also part of the sentence. Okay, okay. Now, now what, what notates something being or not being part of the sentence, warranting a semicolon? Huh? What? What? When somebody makes a sentence, and when they write the sentence, everything is part of the same sentence, and then a grammar Nazi goes in and corrects the sentence and adds a semicolon. What? What dictates that not being part of the sentence, and thus a semicolon being needed in that scenario? A semicolon can be used to to link two sentences together. Without using and, but, or, nor, for, so, yet, any of those, like, combining words. Okay, okay. Uh, now, it seems like we've invented words that uh, serve the scenario. No, no, no. Uh, so... Because in the pro... Look. Look, who, who wronged you? Uh, who well, who okay. wronged you here, alright? I okay, want... So one of the culprits. Uh, who was, was the other culprit? <laughs> one of the culprits was Andrew. Okay. Andrew, let me see if I can find this text. It's been it's been a second, but not long enough that I don't think I could find it if I just scroll up for a second. Um, let me see if I can find I'll just t- term search semicolon. There we go. Uh so in the in the thumbnail, uh me and Andrew have a let's play channel together called Big Guy Little Guy. Um, and he sent me a thumbnail for episode 16 of our Super Paper Mario Let's Play. But in the thumbnail, he accidentally labeled it as uh, Super Paper Mario episode 17. So as a joke, and because it was too early for him to be awake to f- just fix it normally, I took it into Canva and I crossed out 17 and I wrote 16, Andrew, you dumbass. And I put, I, I believe this was wrong. I believe. The correct correct to be what I did would have been uh, I used too many commas. Uh, I, I put 16 comma Andrew comma you dumbass. What I think I should have done is 16 Andrew comma you dumbass. Only one comma. Now, what Andrew proposes I should have done is 16 semicolon Andrew comma you dumbass. Okay. And I, I told him, I, I said, miss me with that semicolon shit. <laughs> and he, his response was, semicolons go hard. Um, and that was my first run-in with the fucking semicolon uh, this past fucking two-week period. Um, and okay. then today, today, which I forgot to, I ended up having to blow off posting it on Twitter because I was busy at work, and then I forgot, so I should probably do that before the night is over. Uh, but today I looked at the upload. 
for the previous episode of Detour Ahead podcast, uh, and I look at the description, and you know, something about it looks a little different than how I had sent it to Alex. And, and what do I see? What do I see in that updated description that has, I think, about, like, seven grammar corrections? What do I see? Seven. Seven. No, 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 no. Not seven. I added one semicolon. That's it. Yeah, what do I... Th- thanks for ruining the reveal. What, what do I see? A fucking semicolon. A because fucking it's properly... semicolon. It is properly there. A comma is not needed. It is a semicolon that is needed there. You also you fuck. also made like a you Keep also made like a and I am a dumb fuck. This is like the one time where I've actually used a semicolon properly in my life outside of English class. You also you made a grammar overstep I think where you assumed I made a mistake when in reality I was framing things in a certain way that I wanted them to be framed and you decided it was incorrect. Uh, now, in my version of the description, first of all, you did make at least three corrections because you uncapitalized the word episode uh, was one of them. I always uh, do that. Why? Because episode doesn't need to be capitalized. It's it, it's a sentence. But it, that's this. Sh- this show is episode 57. That no, it's Halloween it. deep to our head. Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't it's okay. That's like a minor on feed, thing. But on the feed, it's episode fifty-seven Halloween. Had you put in episode fifty-seven parentheses Halloween, I would have, I would have capitalized episode. Okay, okay, you fucking sly motherfucker. It's a description uh, of what the actual episode is about. So anyway, there's that, <laughs> um, and then there's also. In my version of the description, how I intended it to be writ- written and read uh, was Alex and Riley get spooky with all the fucking letters spaced out and discuss Halloween. Yes. End of sentence. Next sentence, trick-or-treating, costumes, scary movies, the whole shebang. Alex decided that this was all supposed to be the same sentence and replaced my period with a comma. Okay, I will go fix that right now. That's a mistake on my part. <laughs> I will go Look, look, I'm I'm taking the L on this one. I I understand YouTube Studio. I understand that that was a mistake. That was a mistake I made. Will you accept my apology? I accept your apology. Thank you for the snacks. Uh, <laughs> I'm Riley. This is Alex. Welcome to Detour Head Podcast. You know, we probably we should have discussed what we're talking about today before we just started the show. I don't think we established what we're talking about. No, 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 I'll continue because you still didn't talk about the biggest thing that you were prob- that you had a problem with. Wait, that that was it. What do you mean? The semicolon. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. So I'll I'll, I'll give you the framing of the semicolon. Uh so in my in my original sentence, it's trick or treating, comma, costumes, comma, scary movies, comma. The whole shebang. Okay, so the comma... So, the reason I put... Here's here's my reasoning. I want to defend myself here. The reasoning I put a colon... I I didn't establish where the semicolon was. The semicolon is after uh, scary movie. The scary movie, semicolon, the whole shebang. Now defend your point. The semicolon denotes the end of the... The end of the grouping. The end of the list. Of things that we talked about, and then sums it up as the whole shebang. That's what the semicolon does, is you put it after, instead of, it's it's how you denote a list. Because the whole shebang, we didn't talk about that, that's why I put a semicolon. We talked about trick-or-treating costumes and scary movies. We, If you put another comma, that means we talked about the whole shebang as well, including it in that list of things we talked about. Well, the whole shebang. The semicolon. What's after the semicolon? The whole shebang is supposed to sum that sum that list up, saying that's all we talked about. Sum that list up and account for any separate things that we discussed that aren't within that window, thus making it part of. Use the semicolon correctly. 
Do not listen, come down on me. You probably listen. You probably did use the semicolon correctly. Probably, uh, I did. Well, I'm not. I'm not a semicolon expert, but you probably did do it I correctly. Am. It seems like you did it correctly. I however, did. However, the semicolon is stupid. We don't need it, and we should get rid of it. It's like Demi Gloom's problem with the letter C. What? Why is it there? Why do you need it? Don't need it for anything. Because you can replace it with a K. You replace it with a K if it's a K, or you could replace it with an S if it's a S. Either way, don't need it. Exactly. Semicolon. I'm not agreeing with you, you on that. A, you could put word there. In a lot of cases, you could probably put a comma there, and it would still be correct. Why do you need it? Get rid of it. Burn it. Take it off your keyboard. Pry it off of your keyboard and burn it. <laughs> that is my call to action on Detour Ahead this day. That's stupid. <laughs> That's entire. God damn it. <laughs> Listen, Alex, it might be stupid, but there's five dollars in it for it. you are eligible for this promotion. I'll if fucking do it right now. You want to burn your semicolon I'll burn keyboard. Key. I'll burn the whole keyboard. I'll go to storage and grab the keyboard I'm never gonna use. <laughs> well that's cheating. Now you, you could have cheated, but now that you've told me that you were gonna I'll cheat. go grab the keyboard that I would prefer to use but didn't want to bring to a different place. Okay. Okay. I don't care. I don't fucking care. <laughs> Fuck you and your grammar Nazi. I didn't even come at you. A grammar Nazi would come at you and say, well, but, 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 but you didn't do this. You should have put a semicolon there. No. Well, you were, you were just, all cute about it, though. You were a little, like, sly grammar Nazi. I put a semicolon correcting your mistake, but I didn't make a big deal out of it. But you, you were when I pointed it out to you, you were like you were sly about it. You you sent me a, a smiling heart emoji because I told you that you you went all grammar Nazi <laughs> on my shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah, not denying that. But... I, 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 I sent her a DM this morning when I saw it. I said, "Girl really went whole hog on the grammar correcting fucking semicolon Lamau," and her response is a little smiling guy with some hearts around him. <laughs> 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 Not wrong. <laughs> Alex, how you been this week? What's going on? Uh, not much. Not much has been going on. Did nothing. Mm. Nothing new. Nothing to report. Nothing Halloween-y going on later tonight? Or no, has been uh, going on recently? Nah, man. Because we are... You're not going to hear this until later, but we are recording it on Halloween. It is Halloween day. When we were recording this podcast. And I don't have a costume and I'm not doing shit. Neither am I. Yeah, no. Uh not doing not doing nothing. I'm almost tempted to see if I can bullshit something and like try to get away with trick or treating. I think it'd be funny. You could. Although trick or treating might end soon though for you. Well, I don't know what time seven. it ends. Well, up here it's like six to eight. Here it's just like nighttime. There's not really a set ending. Probably a lot of houses start to close down, but like I've definitely been out trick or treating pretty late, and I've gotten stuff. Okay, that makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. I miss trick or treating. Trick or treating's rad. I do miss trick or treating. It was a lot of fun to just sit on candy for months on end. I remember the first time. I remember feeling like this is like a milestone in my in my road to becoming an adult man when I was like fucking eight years old. And I I knew the protocol. I was I was not a disobedient kid in most cases. I had my little shit fits, but usually I was pretty, uh, pretty to the line. Um, And my father took me trick or treating and we walked back in the house and I have my candy basket and I ask him, where do I put this? Because standardly, in past years, I would have to put my candy basket somewhere and my candy would be allotted to me in reasonable portions throughout uh, the next couple of months. And this time, my dad was like, you don't have to put it anywhere. Take it to your room. It's yours. And I was like, whoa, bro. (laughs) Holy shit. (laughs) That's fucking wild, man. (laughs) It's a great feeling. I was I was ready to to give up my wares to be distributed to me and just like no it's yours like 
What? Like a com- <laughs> like a, com- like a socialist or communist going to capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> I get to keep it all? It's all mine? The fruits of my own labor are my reward? Oh, that's crazy. I don't have to distribute this amongst the people who didn't earn who didn't earn it. Yeah, the thing is, like, in theory, it was all going to me, just, like, in portions that I wasn't going to fucking yak my shit up. Um, But it's almost certain that my mother was uh, (laughs) mooching off of it, because she is a chocoholic, um, and she cannot control herself. So I'm sure at least half of my chocolate was going to her. Uh, Because she she literally cannot control herself around chocolate. There was one year where, um, I think it was, like, Easter, and I was at my grandmother's house. And when I got home, she was like, yeah, I bought you, like, Butterfingers for Easter, but then I ate them. (laughs) Wow. I ate them all in the middle of the night. (laughs) 10 out of 10, Mom. (laughs) At least she was honest about it, you know? At least. She's like, I don't even know. I don't even like Butterfingers that much. I just got really, I got a craving in the middle of the night. And I ate the Butterfingers. At least she was honest about it. How you been? I'm, you know, I had a fucking stressful day yesterday, but things are calming down now. My fucking, my trip to Massachusetts, which I will uh, have gone on and be home by the time you hear this podcast, uh, was uh, briefly in danger. Uh, There was a mix up. We got our tickets through a third party company. Um, and a third party company that we knew was trustworthy and that the person who helped us with it had been working with for two decades. So we knew we weren't just getting swindled. It was this company is accredited. Um, but we, uh, according to the airline, they didn't have our tickets at all. So yesterday it was like this whole fucking stress fest of, oh my God, I don't have the tickets. I'm going to have to get the, I'm going to have to get them refunded and buy them for a more expensive price from the airline. I don't even know if we can do it. I don't know if we can go. Like, there's this whole, like, crazy fucking stressful time. Um, and then, like, a friend of mine uh, was being very uh, depressed and actively suicidal, and that added to the stress. Uh, but that friend is alive, and my tickets are saved. So, <laughs> doing better than I was yesterday. Friend is alive. Confirmed. Confirmed alive. That, that's good. I'm glad. I mean, it's standard fare. Be- being a being a depressed young man on the internet, uh, surrounding myself with other depressed people, it is it, it's like a it's like the circle of life where like one one person will call the other and be like, oh, I want to kill myself, and the other one will be like, no, don't do it, we love you, and then like the next week it'll be flipped, <laughs> the the same two people but on the opposite ends of the conversation, uh, like that's the that's the circle of life in these little circles that I that I that I associate myself with. I feel, oh, like, I, feel like, I feel like there has to be like one time, right, where like two 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 people in that type of scenario, like one of them gets a call from the other and it's like, hey, what's up? And he's like, yeah, hey, I was just about to call you. Um, and then he's like, yeah, I'm calling you because I'm uh, suicidal and want to kill myself. And then the other one's like, wait, I was going to call you because I wanted to kill myself. Yo, <laughs> bro. <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> what a coincidence you know the universe the universe works in very mysterious ways sometimes the universe fucks you over other times the universe gives you a second chance very true i got another second chance oh um it's very minor but like it's it's funny so I used to work for Ex- excuse real, real, real quick to to hit you on that excuse okay. me just real quick I want to clarify to the audience I am not suicidal um this this phenomenon does happen with me involved but it's just me saying I'm really depressed and I hate my life I I have no I'm cripplingly afraid of I came with this great feature out of package where I'm cripply cripplingly terrified of death uh, so there is zero risk of me killing myself no matter how depressed I get so there you go. If said thing does happen, you can I, I can assure you that this pot the RSS feed will get 
redirected to it's a brand a new, new show. show. <laughs> to a brand new show. <laughs> All the Detour Ahead fans will wake up the next day and see Bang and Cole are bored. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, anyway, so talking about second chances here, uh, I used to work for Amazon. I know I kept that a secret, but like, I used to work for Amazon, I quit. So I don't work there no more. Yeah, well, once you don't work for them anymore, is when you can reveal who I work, who you work for. I don't think I've, I've ever. I've, I'm sure I've said it before. Like I don't, I don't care. Like I'm not gonna say who I work for now. I've never said the name of my company, but the moment I quit, I'll, I'll be like, yeah, that place I'm immediately. I mean, <laughs> it's either FedEx, UPS, USPS, or Amazon. There's only four choices, yeah. right? So, I used to work for Amazon on the very last day, or at least what I thought was going to be the last day. I'm, I, I did quit. It was the last day. Um, I had a job, job interview the, next, the following day with the current company that I'm going to be working for. Yeah. Um, so, on the very last day, I'm pulling into the gas station to fill up the van, because we have to do that at night. For the last time. And a super cute they-them... Ooh! Pulls up onto the other pump across from me, and we're exchanging glances, but neither of us say anything. Now I'm too scared, and I pussied out. Huh. All right, I pussied out. So I go about the rest of like the closing stuff that I have to do, ending shift, and all that. Yeah. I go to park the van, and who shows up <gasps> to park their van right across Holy from mine? Sh- He's working for a different company. The they them. Oh my god. Now, I pussy out again and don't say anything. And I leave work frustrated as hell that I did not woman up and say something. How could you do this? Flash forward. You you can say nut up. You still have nuts. For now. I was, well, the first thing that came to mind was man up, but oh, so that's gotcha. why I said woman up. Uh, fast forward to today, I haven't been on Tinder in like two, maybe three weeks, right? And most of the time, it's literally just swiping because I'm bored. Yeah. Tinder shoots me a little notification that says, Ayo, bitch, you got a match. And I'm like, no fucking oh, all way. right. No, I'll, I'll go check it shot. out because obviously, if if Tinder says you got a match, you're gonna go check it out. It's them. Oh my god! It's the they them from the Amazon gas station. Oh my fucking god! I have been given a second chance. Don't fuck it up. It's fate. This, you have to marry this person. I can't fuck <laughs> this up. I can't fuck <laughs> it up because turns out. They were in the exact same situation as me, and they were they were pissed that they didn't get their second chance either. They were pissed at themselves for not saying anything. We were literally parallel. Oh, you, you, you married. That's it. You found. We were literally parallel. My bad. Fucking second choices, man. Second chances. Sorry, not second choices. <laughs> <laughs> there was another day them chances. earlier in the day, but it didn't work out. <laughs> but like, holy shit. That's that's crazy. Cause it's been a couple weeks. It's been about a week it's been about a week or two since I last saw this person. So I thought I screwed it up. I thought it was just gonna get to get added to the long list of people that I pushed out on talking to. Right? Which is yeah. a very long list of people where I'm just like, you're really cute, but I'm not gonna say anything because I'm probably just gonna fuck it up anyway, so I just don't do it. I've been given a second chance and I feel good. I feel good about it. Wow. Inspiring story. Oh, it's such an inspiring story. Swipe right on everybody, please. (laughs) That's my motto. Swipe right swipe right on everybody. That's probably why I got locked out of Tinder. Swipe right on everybody, but swipe left occasionally so you don't get shadow banned from Tinder. (laughs) (laughs) I guess that does update people on the fact that I'm back on Tinder. So that's that's cool. That's fun. Oh, yeah, because we had talked about how you got locked out of Tinder and you couldn't get back in. Yeah, I just I logged in like I logged in like a week ago. And everything was fine. Everything was normal. Like I didn't get locked out at all. And I was like, "Uh, cool, I wasted all that time. That's all right. 
<laughs> but, but yeah, second chances, man. Second chances are crazy. We could talk about second chances. I, I'm pretty sure we don't have a topic unless you do. Uh, I don't have a lot of second chance stories. <laughs> I mean, I could. I know you're you're doing a second chance right now. I'm doing a second chance right now. Yeah, I killed Peg and Colo and then brought it back oh, as true. D2 this head. show is a second chance. This entire show is a second chance. And it's like the uh, I don't want to say I, I was gonna go a little further with that joke, but I'll uh, I'll curb it and just speak honestly. I was gonna say <laughs> I was gonna say it's the reverse this time, but no, I, I'm into this show. Uh, but l- last time uh, was I was super into it the first time. Uh, like way even way back in the day, like I was doing fucking pixels, polygons, and fun, and fucking Pokemon Variety Hour, two shows that I don't do anymore. Although Variety Hour uh, will come back at least a couple more times because I mean have- you're allowed back on PVH though, right? Or not PVH? Uh, PVAF, <laughs> right? Pixels. Uh, I mean, I yes? Question mark. Uh, I that's, was. That's another I, second chance. True. Look, you got like I don't think people realize how many opportunities they get in life that just completely pass them by. Like with when a second the, chance pixels, its I've head, sometimes you don't chances. <laughs> well, second chance can be vague. Yeah, but, it can uh, also be as small as you missed out on getting a candy bar, and then you find and then you find one another another day, and you're just like, oh, second chance, easy, second opportunities. But yeah, I uh, I was on there last week, and it went well, and my arch nemesis, DJ Skywalker, was there, and we were fairly civil. Um, and I was also on yesterday, uh, but I fell asleep. I don't know if DJ... I know Jindy said it was fine, but I don't know if DJ's going to be like, you fell asleep on the show, that's unprofessional. I don't know if DJ's going to use it as a bouncing off point or for why I can't come back, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Just try and stick to the falling asleep on the shows that you that you run. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I know I fell asleep on the issue crew last night. Ha ha. Uh, but uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to mend that bridge with DJ Skywalker. But you never know. I, I, I'm here like speculating on how he's gonna fuck me. But but like I, I want that bridge to be mended. I'm just. Uh, what you're saying is you're giving DJ Skywalker a second chance. Exactly. <laughs> 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 God, I love impromptu topics because we didn't discuss one beforehand. <laughs> wow, so many second chances that you don't even think about in life. But yeah, like we, uh, I was doing pixels and I was doing Pokemon Variety Hour, uh, and uh, you came along. Uh, the doting little Colochu came along, b- big fan of the podcast. Uh, and I, I found you, and I, I nurtured you into the the content creation machine of a woman you are today. Uh, and we started, uh, we started the Peg and Colo are bored podcast. We got a, we, we were gonna do like a topic about that was gonna be our topic for like episode two, <laughs> and we never did it. Uh, but yeah, we started. Uh, we started a podcast before this one called Peg and Colo are Bored, which is still available on the Riley Podcast Mega Feed if you're curious about it. Do you have a playlist um, for it so it's easy to find? Uh, no, but that's a great idea. I should do that. We do talk about it enough for a playlist to be warranted. True. That's that's very fair. Uh, I should I should make like the, the Riley and Colo Chew mega playlist and put in like Peg and Colo are Bored, this show, and like every one of my shows you've guessed it on. Which is like three, so it wouldn't be that hard to do. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we did that show for I think like twelve episodes. Twelve? I don't think it was that many. It was definitely no, it was that many. It's either twelve or thirteen. Peg and Colo are bored. Podcast and shows. Okay, 15. There is an episode 15, but there are a couple that are like weird. I didn't think we did it for that long. I thought it only lasted like three weeks. Okay, I think 12 was the last real episode. I didn't th- I didn't think it lasted that long. Was it weekly or did we do a couple double weeks? Uh I think we might have done a double week or two. 
That makes episode, a lot more sense. Episode 12 was the last like regular Peg and Color board. This is a regular show that we do episode. And then episode 13 uh, was one I did with my friend Joey to announce the Peg and Color board hiatus. <laughs> Uh, then episode 14 was uh, years later, maybe not years later, but at least a year later, uh, randomly on a whim, uh, where I just wanted to do a random podcast with Andrew without a format. So I was like, we did Peg and Not Colo or Board when I did it with Joey. And I know regular Peg and Colo or Board's not coming back. So what if just as a bit, I made another episode and it was another Peg and Not Colo or Board? Uh, so we did that. So that was episode 14. And then episode 15 was when I secretly recorded a VC with me, you, and Penguin. <laughs> and that was that was the last episode. I remember that. I was very against it. And then I was like, ah, oh, fuck it. You're probably just going to put it up anyway. You gave me permission to post it. And then immediately after I posted it, you got pissed and yelled at me. That's the, the, I don't think you were, I don't know if you remember it that way, but that is what occurred. That was also how many years ago? Four? Yes. Wow, that's crazy that Pegan Polo started four years ago. Yeah, Alex was like, I was like, listen, I'm not going to post it if you don't want to let me post it. And you were like, you could post it. You you sounded kind of hesitant, but you're like, yeah, whatever, post it. And then I posted it. And you were like, yeah, but I said you could post it, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to be mad at you about it. <laughs> that's exactly how I talk, yeah. <laughs> you forgot to put, I'm Colo, and this is how I talk. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was Peg and Color Board's uh, legacy. Funnily enough, we we tried we tried to enlighten you many years before. Because if you'll remember, uh, Peg and Color Board, uh, the episode titles were always like a couple topics that we discussed, and like that was the title. Uh, do you want to know what uh, episode eleven was called? Waifu Wars. No, 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 no. Uh, yes, because I did talk about Asterios in the Waifu Wars episode, so that's another thing that could be uh, considered. But episode 11 of Peg and Color Board. Uh, let me pull it up again. There it is. Uh, we, would, we also always put the guest as like the first like thing in the list if we had a guest. Episode 11 was called Special Guest Grant Leahy, Water, The Dick Show. Really? Yes. So me and Grant probably talked about the dick show and you were there, but you, you weren't interested. You didn't know what you were missing out on. I'm slightly intrigued. Oh, let's go to YouTube. It's not on YouTube. Why is it not on YouTube? Because uh, uh, it got deleted from YouTube uh, during the era where I... Uh, well, there was an era where my entire YouTube channel was privated uh, because the cop... So where can these podcast episodes that we're talking about be found? On the Riley Podcast Mega Feed, on wherever podcasts are found. Uh, so like oh, I'm like Spotify, Spotify Apple and shit. And stuff. Oh, yeah. you fucking loser. Okay. Uh, so. You should re upload those. Perhaps I will. Uh, but, uh, so, uh, real quick, I'll just explain. So, there was an era where my entire YouTube channel was privated uh, because there was the COPPA controversy. I don't know if you remember anything about that. Uh, the COPPA controversy basically was there was some sort of law that was going into effect that was going to affect YouTube. It's why the made for kids shit is there that you have to check on every video. Um, and the way that the law was worded and the way that the policies around it were worded uh, created this giant panic that anybody who was anybody who was making adult content that featured children's content like children's video games were going to get falsely reported as videos for kids and then their channels were going to get fucked over because their videos got marked for kids without them knowing and then they're full of fucking swear words and shit so they get struck down um and everybody was like freaking out and like i don't know if my channel is going to survive this i think i might just have to fucking pull out um and during that era i decided to private my entire youtube channel and move over to bitshoot uh, and that's what I did for a while. This is interesting. Do you know what episode one was? Of Peg and Cola Board? No, what was it? Oh, is Maddox in there? I feel like we talked about Maddox once. Bips, Pokemon, and Maddox. Yeah, okay. I think that might have been... No, because that was in the Pokemon Clover Let's Play, where I was, uh... I don't know if you recall this one. That's This is another 
uh, sly little thing. I read you a Maddox article during the Pokemon Clover Let's Play. Yeah, we talked about that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, there, there were there were little seeds in there. Who knew that years later they would bloom so heavily? Uh, but I'm gonna save those for later. I'm actually curious to see what kind of opinion I had on something I didn't know about. I I wonder if I told you about the lawsuit in that episode. We we did this whole. That's what I'm curious about. Is I want to see what I was told and what I <laughs> stupidly ignored. But uh, shit. And now I know that I'm saying uh, that's another I. So there was an episode of Megazord Radio recently, my podcast with Co Royalty, where we discuss Power Rangers. Uh, that is four and a half hours long. Um, and the reason that it's four and a half hours long and not longer than that is because I edited it very heavily and very particularly. Uh, because we talked about too much shit. I didn't. I, I didn't af- account for the fact that. Uh, usually we're talking about Mighty Morphin Power Rangers from the 90s, and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers from the 90s is full of filler shit that I just get past in a couple of notes. Uh, whereas, like, when there's actual dialogue and shit happening, I have a lot of notes, because I'm writing down, like, what everybody's saying, what everybody's doing. It's very particular and deep, uh, the notes that I take, because I'm not good at, like, limiting them, so I just kind of go in-depth. Uh, and, but there's so much filler time that I get through it relatively quickly. But what we decided we were going to do is, since there was a new Power Ranger season recently, we decided we we're going to alternate, on, and we're going to cover one week Mighty Morphin, one week the new season, until we finish the new season. Um, and what I failed to account for is the almost complete lack of filler time in the new season, uh, which made talking about two episodes of it very long-winded, because the notes were very long. Uh, so... And we actually had to do it in two sessions, which were broken up by, like, two and a half weeks, uh, because fuck you, Crow Royalty, you fucking piece of shit, can't fucking schedule one podcast that you said you would do tomorrow, and then you went to a party and got drunk, and then you fucked it up about eight more times before two and a half weeks later we finally got into a call and fucking did it. Uh, But it was split into... You know what that sounds like? A second chance? Sounds like someone (laughs) needs a second chance. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, so we did, fuck, uh, so we did that, and while I was editing that show, I just, I I became so acquainted with how often I completely instinctively say, uh, it made me want to fucking slam my head into a wall every time I heard it after a while. (laughs) It made me want to quit podcasting. It's a little harsh. Because that's that's a verbal crutch, and you'd think I'd be past it by now. This was like a this was a pixels bit years ago, where like Val pointed out how often me and Gingy say uh, and we like got mad about it for a couple episodes, and then we moved past it and we reference it occasionally. And I'm like, God damn it, Gingy, don't talk about the uh. But just going combing through the audio of this fucking four hour podcast and just listening to how often it really just like demoralized me. It's probably more on there than any other show because I'm reading notes. I think it's like an instinctive thing when I start to read. Like when I stop reading to talk and then I go back to reading, it's my fucking like instinct to say, uh. It was was very painful. (laughs) I do a lot of ums as well, but that's just because my brain moves faster than my eyes can read. So I have to like, I'm sure you've noticed this, but I have to like stop in the middle of like reading things and um Aha! I have to stop in the middle of reading things and just gather my thoughts real quick mm-hmm. or just slow down and let my brain catch up I gotta just stop talking like there are magical robots that can cut out the silence so I need to learn to just like shut the fuck up for a second instead of just saying uh but then people are so used to it that used to me continuing to talk and putting the us in there that when I stop uhing and start pausing, they're like, Riley, are you there? It's like, hey, give me a fucking second. Shut up. <laughs> God damn it. It's a disease. Yeah, I, I have an I, uh I definitely, disease. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It kind of sucks, but I don't think I'm that bad with us. I say I'm um a lot, but that's just because my brain works faster than I can read and talk. 
It's like my brain's the teleprompter and the words are going too fast. <laughs> you know, part of me wonders to... I don't want to dwell on this shit too much, obviously, because we've had a conversation about how it's a problem, but we brought it up, so it's relevant. I wonder if... Because there were a couple of times where you had some form of an opportunity or, or were going to have some form of an opportunity to be in a voice call on a podcast with Asterios Kokonos prior to your introduction into the Dick Show universe. He was supposed to judge a waifu war rematch for us that fell through. Uh, he was on Pokemon Variety Hour. You just weren't on that episode. I wonder if that would have gotten you. I wonder if a conversation with Asterios Kokonos would have been enough to suck you into that universe. Maybe. But, like, hindsight's a bitch. There's really no telling. Like, there's there's content out there where you actively tell me about about this whole universe, and I just don't listen. Yeah, that's the thing. I talk about it all the time, and nobody pays attention. But, like, I remember... I don't know if Odin ever pursued anything further. I doubt it because he has like a child and a life. Uh, but I've talked to I talked about the man for years and nobody cared. But then he was on Variety Hour with me and Odin, and Odin followed him on Twitter before the podcast was even over because he was just so funny and cool. <laughs> Asterios? Yes. Interesting. We talked about Pikachu. Uh, it's a great episode, but the audio is fucking terrible. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> Why is it bad? Uh, because Asterios was echoing, uh, and I was in a hotel lobby. Oh, was that when you were doing PodFest? No, it was not PodFest. It was uh, a little bit after PodFest. I was uh, on a vacation. It, I was still in Florida, but I was in like a nicer like city uh, because my aunt and my cousin were visiting. So like me and my mom and them and my grandparents all got uh, hotel rooms in like a nice hotel. And we hung out in that city for a week. And that's where I was. Okay. So I was in a fucking hotel lobby doing a podcast. And there's all fucking hotel lobby background noise. Um, and here's fucking Asterios with his mic. And me and Odin are echoing through his mic. And we couldn't fix it. Uh, so it was pretty bad. Maybe you'll get that second chance to uh, do another episode with them eventually. Sometime. I, I did. It was the MoCast. It actually went pretty well, I think. There you go. Second chances <laughs> usually work out. Although Mo Diggity, because what happened was he uh, he shit all over us. Uh, Stereo says this bit. Apparently, he's done it to multiple people where he'll go on shitty podcasts and then he'll like try to whip them on the uh, into shape. He calls it a Stereo's podcast boot camp. So like, he, <laughs> so he came on the MoCast and he like shit all over us and told us how how we were doing our show wrong. And I thought it was fucking hilarious. But Mo Diggity's like, yeah, man, I'm really embarrassed about that. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's I mean, why I like this show because I really don't think people can shit on this show outside of maybe audio quality, but like I feel uh, maybe we like according to the standards of like somebody who's super into broadcasting, you might do a little bit of meandering. Like I know I listen to who are these podcasts, so I hear a lot of the criticisms. A lot of people don't like when people just talk about their lives. And we do that a lot. I think it's engaging, and I'm sure there are plenty of people who agree, but I know that's a common As long as it's not something guys. like hyper specific, like I'm sure if this if this was a popular podcast, people would relate to matching with the random person they saw they saw out in the world on Tinder. That's like a super relatable thing. Maybe not super relatable, but like that's not a solely unique experience, I'm sure. And if yeah. it is, I better not fuck this up. <laughs> Man, we should have invited Sirius on this show, but I'm too much of a pussy to DM him. You're too much of a pussy to DM anybody. I know. I want you to do it. <laughs> Your name comes first in the on the logo, so you have to do all the DMing. I don't even think his DMs are open on tw on Twitter. They are. Are they? I believe so. Well, I guess he follows me, so I don't know. But I feel like I DM'd him before he followed me. Did you? Did I tell you about the secret uh, second account on Twitter that I have? Just to follow Maddox, <laughs> you said? <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I didn't know if that was uh, out there. I haven't been blocked yet. Literally just shows up as one follower. Although, I did one... I'm only following one person. It's Maddox. 
Right? You want to know who follows me, though? Who? Motherfucking Chris the Kiwi followed me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What a fucking accolade. I don't know why Chris the Kiwi... I haven't gotten any DMs. I opened my DMs immediately afterwards. <laughs> just, just, just to be able to talk I, about I, I, don't, I don't think Chris the Kiwi is into your specific breed of woman, unfortunately. He still followed me, though. True, true. Um, let me go back to my other one. Let's see. His DMs are are open. Oh, nope. Get verified to message Asterios. Oh, yeah, because that, that's the default setting now. Twitter fucked it up. By the way, anybody who's listening, D- DM me on Twitter. I, I, can, I opened it. I, I went and switched it. I thought about it. Once I, once I start getting more money, I might just go and get verified just so I can start messaging people. And I know I've definitely talked about this before, but... I feel like awkward inviting Asterios on shows now because I kind of ghosted him once. Yeah, you talked about that already. Yeah, so I feel kind of weird about it now. I don't know. Maybe. Man, do you follow any do you follow any porn accounts on Twitter? You don't have to say who they are. A few. Do you? Yep. All right, I follow a VTuber porn. Mm -hmm. This one VTuber. I'm not gonna say who they are. Um, Why not, you pussy, you coward, you fucking okay. bitch. Uh, but anyway, so she she's at like I I don't want to get the numbers wrong. Uh, four hundred ninety seven point seven k followers. Ooh. So four hundred ninety seven thousand seven hundred followers. Right. She said once she hits five five hundred k, uh, she'll post the model nude. And I'm just like, oh, that. Why does that do it for me? Fuck. Now I'm just Whoa. like checking every day. All those fucking. Pu- it takes. I need to make an alt account because it takes all my fucking self control when there's like a porn drawing, or it's like a drawing of like a hot girl, and it's like if this gets a thousand retweets, I'll take some clothes off. And I can't let people know what I'm into, so I can't do it, but I want to. I mean, I follow her. Obviously, I follow I, her. I gotta, I gotta pull shit out of the oven. Hold on, real quick. <laughs> okay, I'm back. I have. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to the show, everybody. <laughs> and welcome back. So, do you... You don't vape, do you? No. Okay. I, I used gonna... to, Vaping used to be my primary avenue of consuming marijuana. Uh, but okay, I do but no... I, no... I don't do, I don't do uh, nicotine vapes, no. Okay, I unfortunately do. Okay. Um, there's nothing I can do about it, but I switched to flavored ones, like disposable. There's nothing I can do about it. That is a false statement. No, there's nothing I can do about it. I mean, I'm you I'm can hooked. stop. Yeah, and be miserable. Okay, <laughs> and not get the taste of strawberry peach mint in my mouth whenever I want. Yeah, okay. Listen, the vaping down. is kind of relaxing. I don't. I, I never got hooked on it, but I have done it in isolation a couple of times. Like I have friends who do. It I believe in my nice. mind. I believe that it helps with ADHD. That could be. That could very well be. It literally gives me something to do. So I can, like, not sit still, because I still can't sit still. But, like, usually if I'm not doing anything and I'm literally just sitting downstairs binging, like, just binging shit, I need something to do. If I'm running out of, like, stuff to do on my phone or whatever, I'll just sit and vape. And instead of vaping, it would be eating. So, but, um, anyway. So, I... Have a new flavor sitting upstairs. The current one is uh, strawberry pinch, strawberry peach mint, and it's pretty good. Strawberry pinch, strawberry peach mint. Uh, I believe the one upstairs is blueberry lemonade, blueberry watermelon. That sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty damn good, dude. I saw that and I was like, "Fuck, I don't have money. Give it to me anyway. That's fine." <laughs> I don't have money, but I'll I'll I'll, I'll arrange. Well, it. <laughs> so the other thing is, I'm very lo- like logical. No, not logical. Um, there's there's a word for it. Well, I don't what know. are you looking for here? Frugal? Not frugal. No, like systematic. Uh, okay. So I after the first two, I did. I figured that they last four to five days. With the amount that I'm hitting them, they last for like 2,000 puffs or whatever, but it, it lasts me like four to five days, right? So I figured I'm on 
day. Yeah. Yes. Because she wants to eat a million times a day. Sorry, did I miss something? No, I stopped talking when I heard background noise. But, uh... God damn it. Fuck. <laughs> I don't pay attention to it. Just say cock every time you want to say uh. <laughs> say I suck cocks. Oh, yeah, I don't think you've gotten there yet. No, I have. I'm the oh, okay. biggest problem. Instead of saying, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay, I didn't know how early that started. <laughs> no, that started almost immediately. But this isn't about that. Anyway, they last like four to five days. So this is like day four. So I was like, okay, well, this one's going to die soon. And, you know, th- there's nothing worse than not having access to it, right? Yep. Like being out and about or being stuck at home and you're just like, you just don't have it. Sure. So... So I got that new one. Well, anytime I get the new one, it seems like that's all. The new one is just the more important one. I just I just want to do the new one. That's it. That's all I want to do. And it bothers me that I can't go upstairs and grab it because I have I, I have to. Fuck. I have to finish. I have to finish one and throw it away before I can open the next one. <laughs> you can't you can't mix them. No, you can't. I it is it is relaxing. Like I'm not gonna get into it because I don't want to get into like the nicotine slippery slope. But like there was one time where it was just I I I'd hit it a couple times at the beach. But I was at, I was at the beach with Patrick, my platonic boyfriend, uh, and we went to the beach. We had a nice beach day. It was very uh, great. Um, and then we left, and he was in my house for a while after the beach, and he left his vape in. And the next day, I was just fucking vaping all day. It was nice. I still had, like, the afterglow from the beach. And I was vaping. It was, I will it was say, nice try and stay away from time. Try and stay away from it. It's a bitch to stop. Yeah, no, it's not something I have done in a long time. Or even when I had done it, had done more than, like, two or three times. Um, but it's nice. I could understand the appeal. Man, dude, issue crew last night was so fun. I, I, I don't know why I haven't done issue crew yet. Yeah, good fucking question. Uh, but yeah, what well, it was a good time. You, uh, you got it was the B cast kind of though. That's not the people you usually hear on the issue crew. You hear them sometimes. They're co-hosts, but they're the ones who show up less often. Uh, there's there's random Candor who. Uh, so the issue crew, we have a set of rules. Uh, we literally have an issue crew constitution. That we all have to follow. I didn't know about this. Yes. The the rule about co-hosts and how often they have to appear is as a co-host of the issue crew, you do not have to appear on every episode. However, you are required to appear at least once a month. Random Candor, for most of his career on the issue crew, has appeared exactly once a month. (laughs) Okay. So, Random Candor is a rare one. And then there's Kathy who she's kind of in and out. She's actually one of the most common ones. If you go by numbers, cause we have a, uh... Oh no, that's not true. Cause that's counting the movie show that she's on almost every episode. There's a playlist on the issue crew channel uh, for each host. So you can find episodes that a specific host you like is on. Um, and Kathy is pretty close to the highest, but that's cause it's every video on issue crew and she's on almost every movie review. Uh, so the main show she's on sparingly, we thought she was gone. Like, I was about ready to fucking commission a logo without Kathy on it, because fucking... Last time she was on the issue crew, she was like, yeah, you know, I think this might be my last episode. I'm not really feeling like being on Discord all the time and being on this show is, like, a good thing for me, um, because I'm a traditional Christian and I want to go fuck transphobes. Uh, So I think I'm gonna... (laughs) (laughs) I'm gonna withdraw from the issue crew. Um, And then she... uh, She quote-unquote got banned from Discord, which I'm not sure that I believe because she was also saying she was going to delete Discord and not tell any of us how to contact her. Uh, But she claims that did not happen. She, in fact, got banned from Discord. Uh, So she got banned from Discord. She was off Discord. So I assumed she was gone and it was done. So I was was about ready to commission a new issue for logo without Kathy. Literally the only thing that held it up. I would have already had the logo. The only thing that held it up is that uh, Crow Royalty's status as a member of the Issue Crew is of constant debate uh, because they're not very good at being on the Issue Crew a lot of the time, um, and I feel bad, so I don't want to kick them off. 
Uh, so there has been like deliberation on whether Crow was going to continue to be a part of the show or not. So I didn't want to get a new logo until I knew whether I was taking Crow out of it or not. So that was the only reason Kathy remained on the logo. And then fucking just out of nowhere, two days ago, she showed back up and I hit her up and she was like, are, and I was like, are you still done with the issue crew or should I add you back to the group chat? And her response was, I was never done with the issue crew. <laughs> Even though she said <laughs> that it might be her last episode, last time she was on, but I don't know. Either way, uh, well, that's that's Craig that fucked up. Hopefully, Giar holds out. Uh, <laughs> Did he just uh, leave? Just decide to leave, or what happened? Yeah, he just he left for like one second and came back. But usually, when that happens, that means he hasn't actually been recording for like five minutes. Ah, uh, okay. Well, OBS has been picking up both our audio, so yeah. So fine. push comes to shove, uh, but. Shit, what was I saying? My mother walked in and we got distracted. So now I've just completely forgotten. What I- oh, Kathy, Kathy. Uh, so Kathy showed up out of the blue a couple days ago. And now she's like, I was never done with the issue crew. What are you talking about? Uh, so then we did we did the issue crew last night, um, which was originally uh, the, things just fell into place perfectly because originally literally nobody showed up including me, because I was in an unrelated VC that I couldn't leave right away. So literally nobody showed up. I showed up a little bit late. Nobody seemed like they were... Nobody was, like, looking for me. So nobody showed up. Uh, And so it was like, shit, what do I do? So I hit Alex up. Sorry, my mother is skeptical on me feeding the cat for some reason. She has to cross-examine me on whether or not I fed the cat. Uh, So anyway, Kathy. So... It's so I don't have anybody. So I hit Alex up. I'm like, hey, you want to do an issue crew? Because like literally nobody showed up. I'm kind of in a spot here. Um, and she agreed to it. Uh, so we we get together. And then right as me and Alex are getting together, random Candor hits me up because I hit him up earlier in the day because he he was on his deadline. I was like, hey, buddy, it's the last Monday of the month. You're going to be on. And he hadn't responded to me. But then, just as me and you are getting together, I get a hit up from Random Candor, like, oh shit, sorry man, is it still going on? And I'm like, actually, it has not started, because nobody showed up. (laughs) And he's like, okay, give me a bit, and then we'll do it. So, we gave Random Candor a bit, and while we were giving Random Candor for a bit, giving Random Candor a bit, Kathy showed up. So we ended up with a full four-person cast of me, Random Candor, Kathy, and special guest Alex. Uh, and I think it uh, it was a very good episode. It's kind of unfortunate that I fell asleep at the end. Bro, I literally fucking blacked out. Like, I didn't realize I had fallen asleep until that was relayed to me. See, so what happened was things were getting soup. Like, things kept escalating between uh, me, Random Candor, and Kathy. Yeah. So things kept going like higher, 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 higher. And I'm just like, all right, I got I got to be the bigger person here. I got to step down. I got to step down. We got to end this podcast because you haven't said you didn't say anything for at least 20 minutes. I'm going to have to listen to the end of this. because I have no idea what this escalating war between you and Kathy was in the final. It's moments. great. It's great. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. It's it's gold. Probably my best work. I put my 13 years of Catholic school to use. Um, That's all I want to say. I don't want to spoil too much of the issue crew. Go listen to the issue crew. Um, so, so things keep escalating. And I'm just like, all right, all right, all right. I'm pretty sure Riley fell asleep. Let's just, let's end the podcast here. So we end the podcast. I say, I'm pretty sure Riley fell asleep. So I call you. And you don't pick up, which My means always on silent. it's always on silent. I never have it on. Yes, but you're if you're ignoring, you're usually sitting on your phone. Yes, so you I would have seen your call if I was just like balanced bounced out. But no, I was I was unconscious. <laughs> yeah, so like if I call you and you don't answer, most likely you're sleeping. So we wrapped up the episode, and then you woke up. But like that, so like the ending isn't that bad. I think Demigloon popped in to plug your link tree because I forgot the link. Hell yeah. But uh, so I literally woke. It's one of those sleeps where like you don't even know what happened because I woke up and it, I felt like it had only been a second since last I had been awake. You said something that was like about the show, 
And I, still thinking that I'm performing on a comedy podcast, was like, something like, that's what you can expect here on The Issue Crew, or like something fucking... I do remember that, yeah. And then I... And then I... Like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> and then I looked at the voice chat, and I saw that Random Candor and Kathy were gone. It was you and Gingy, and there were no recording bots, and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, the issue crew last night was so good. Such so good. Such a good episode. Go listen to it. Really it was good. great. We had a very special guest. Perhaps the most special guest you could ever have on a podcast. What do you mean? The, this this was a wholly amazing appearance by a oh, very special oh, guest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now no, you man, it's remember. it's so good. See, that's why I want to try and like I want to I want to do it again. If you can get Kathy back on, please, please let me let me. Come you'll back only to you'll only do crew. it if Kathy's on. <laughs> oh my god, it's great content for you. I'm basically giving you free content there. Because you <laughs> know, like to, Rage gets I'd like content. to have you on with like our no- our normal cast. Like you know, we'd have we just have like a genuine good time. It was like me and you and like Demi Gloom and Mo Diggity. <laughs> but- the issue crew's whack. I don't know what's going on with the issue crew. I think we're I think we're better now than we have been in like recent times, but like I don't know, man, it's weird. I'm glad that Kathy's back now. That 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 makes it a little bit better because it was getting to the point where nobody was showing up because Demi Gloom's shit is broken. <laughs> and she can only use her shitty phone mic, which p- picks up every little tiny bit of noise that she ever partakes in, so she's not able to podcast under those conditions. <laughs> I did notice that, yeah. It was basically a detour ahead crossover, so. True. It almost just was that. It almost was just me and you, but then Random Candor and Kathy slid in. Well, no, that makes it a crossover. You and I are from Detour Ahead, and we're showing up on the issue crew. That's true, it's the takeover. <laughs> that's that's what we call it whenever Mimo and Robin are on another show. We call it the MoCast takeover. Yeah. But, oh man, dude! I finally put my thirteen years worth of ca- Catholicism knowledge to use, we, and it felt. We, we need to make so the. Good. It was to, so funny. I genuinely made Gingy happy. I need to make the Alex's Catholic school trauma playlist, and it's just the intense rage of an a- Catholic school survivor episode of Detour Ahead and that episode of the Issue Crew. It's not even like the intense rage. It's literally just me using my knowledge to to either get Kathy to go off on some some pro Catholic rant or to use my knowledge to like absolutely ob- obliterate any of the sh- like basically counter her beliefs with actual ki- like actual real knowledge and it's great and it's so funny I, I legitimately have had that was like one of my best performances I've done. Wonderful. I, I, I like the energy right now, so I don't want to end it prematurely, but I do have to piss and grab some stuff. I'll be right back. We back. Uh, but yeah, Kathy is like insane Christian psychopathy is <laughs> such a such an interesting thing. It, it's funny. It's funny when I hear people get introduced to it for the first time because obviously like the issue crew circle she's in there everybody knows but then like Gingy had never really interacted with kathy before until she Dude, joined Gingy, the call Gingy wanted to chime in so badly and i told Gingy he should have chimed yeah, in i wouldn't have cared Gingy want Gingy said next time kathy's in a vc he wants to he wants to come on and ask her is Al, is his child going to going to heaven because Al, his kid was baptized but was also born out of wedlock i don't think being born out of wedlock makes you not no 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 in in catholic like super super tradition that's a bad thing that's why yeah the parents go to hell but not the kid no 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 that's why joseph and mary were shunned from everywhere. That's why Joseph was going to leave Mary, because she had a kid out of wedlock, because they weren't married at the time. Ah, shit. So Jinji wants to know, and Jinji also yeah, wants to know kid, if he's going to hell because of tattoos. Would, yeah. He would go to hell for the wedlock. The kid wouldn't go to hell for anything. 
The wedlock is the sin of the parent, not the sin of the child. Yeah, but you never know with Kathy, though. Fair. That's why, it, that's why he wants to ask, because it's interesting, and Kathy has this, like, how, how do I put, like... Uh, psychopathy? Yeah, psychopathy. <laughs> like, it's... Like, she's entitled to her own beliefs. That True. Like, I, I fully believe that everybody's entitled to what they believe in. You are allowed to believe in whatever you want, even if it's... Fucking transphobes. For no reason. Like, like I, I don't get that part of it, but... It's just a weird fetish thing. It, it, I don't want to call it a fetish. That's what it is. That's the correct I mean, way to describe what, what is happening in that scenario. <laughs> no, <laughs> Kathy, Kathy's great. I, I don't want to bring her back on this show, but... <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I want to have a little bit more interaction before I bring her on this show. We should do the religion episode of Detour Ahead and have Kathy. I'm trying to stay away from religion on this show. Yeah, but once to fuck with Kathy would be funny. No, do it in the issue crew. But that's not... In the issue crew, we do issues now. We don't do talk... Because there was a plan. Well, no. I'll bring in... My issue is Catholicism. (laughs) No, I think I'll we bring that, that in next time I show up. I don't think you should be so afraid to do it. I think we should do it on this show, because here's the thing. Here's the pitch, right? So there was something that fell through back when the issue crew was a topic-based show. Okay. Uh, that I think we could port over to Detour Head and have a fun, like, a multi-guest chaos episode where we all just fucking rag on Kathy. Uh, mm. because, because the original plan was we were going to do the religion episode of the issue crew and crow royalty has a friend who is a former catholic who has since been awakened to the silliness of the catholicism uh shit so the plan was to have the religion discussion with crow royalty and crow royalty's friend and kathy and me just add you to that equation do it on detour ahead i think it would be great yeah, but that's a lot of people, though. I I think that's more of an issue crew thing. Yeah, we can have a lot of people on this show. Why not? I don't like having a lot of people on this show. Why? Because it gets too chaotic and it's too hard to follow. Yeah, but it's fun. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. 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 We'll see. No promises, but we'll see. We'll, we'll, I'll have my people contact your people. <laughs> my lawyers will talk to your lawyers. We'll figure it out. But um, yeah, it was just it was a great little mini crossover episode. It was pretty great. You all should go listen to it. Uh, but real quick, I want to say <laughs> we were talking about lawyers, and it reminded me I, I finally got back to Better Call Saul. Really? Yes, I am now halfway through season three. I just got uh, through. I just got through one of the most famous episodes, the episode Chicanery. Uh, I don't know if you remember just by the title what that episode is. It's the episode where. Uh, it's the episode where they're having the bar hearing for uh, Jimmy's uh, lawyer status because of him destroying Chuck's tape. Um, and he has Yule plant the battery on him to prove that his condition is bullshit and like brings his wife in to rattle him up and shit. I remember that. Yeah. Man, Better Call Saul was so good. It is really good so far, and I'm excited to see where it goes. It's so good. It gets really good. What I'm interested in to see how the show addresses is here halfway through through season three, Jimmy McGill is still like somewhat, he's not innocent. He's a criminal, but he's still somewhat sympathetic. Whereas in breaking bad, Saul Goodman. Oh, you're looking for the crossover of where he becomes Saul Goodman. Yeah. Saul Goodman is a a fucking scumbag sleazebag. Who's very willing to just have people killed and scam people for all their worth. Uh, So I want to know where I want to see the transformation. I want to see when, just like when people make the joke, like this is where Walter White became Heisenberg. I want to see where James McGill becomes Saul Goodman. You'll see it. Okay. Okay. It's. I don't want to spoil. It. I'm. I'm not going to talk don't about this. I don't want to spoil. I don't want to spoil it because most of my most of what I remember is from the le- season four and five. So. Okay. Okay. Not six. You don't remember the last one. Was there six? Yes. 
Oh, well, I mean, then it was four, five, six. It, it doesn't matter. It's the last couple seasons that I remember. Gotcha. Um, once you finish, did Demi ever watch? Demi watched it, right? Yes. We're going to bring Demi on and we're going to do Better Call Saul episode. We should. Just because it, it feels right because we did a whole Breaking Bad episode. True. So you gave yeah, up on doing the season that. season review, huh? Yeah. We might go back to it. But I'm not going to wait for it anymore. That's understandable. I mean, you can't wait on everybody. Yeah. I waited on I waited on Gage to watch Better Call Saul and I, and at some point I waited what like a year and a half, almost two yeah. years. And I basically just looked at I just went down to him and I was like are you ever going to watch this with me? And he's like, nah. And I'm like, all right, cool. And I went upstairs and immediately started it. Hell yeah. So you want to know what's been popping up on my TikTok lately? Uh Uh-oh, what? Oh, boy. I don't think you're ready for the amount of white girl levels that are about to... Oh, Lord. You want to take one guess. Just based off white girl energy. Is it some sort of makeup and or Starbucks nonsense? <laughs> no, it's neither of those two. It's a show. What show? Grey's Anatomy. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. Grey's Anatomy has been popping up. I've been getting clips. I've been getting clips from Grey's Anatomy. What fucking clips are in that show? What is clip worthy in Grey's Anatomy? Just the different patients and the different, like, Shit that they go through and stuff. Okay, okay. Like, right off the bat, there's a lady who thinks there's bugs eating her, and they bring in, but she knows she's not crazy, and does not want a mind doctor to come in and talk to her, so they have this psychiatry doctor come in Yeah. under the guise of being a real doctor, just just the talk. <laughs> just the talk. <laughs> and he basically tricks her into uh, realizing that she's all fucked in the head. That honestly, what I want to see clips from, what honestly, I might start watching this show ironically, entirely ironically. <laughs> are, you, are you familiar with a show called The Good Doctor? Man, I can't, I can't get behind it. <laughs> I'm not old enough. I gotta hit one once I hit once I become a 35 year old woman, I will I will probably go and search up the good doctor and get really deep into it. No, but here's the thing. I think it might be a gold mine. Not for the reasons it wants to be. It wants to be this serious doctor drama with this like portrayal of autism and its causes. But what it is, the clips that I've seen lead me to believe it is a hilariously stupid portrayal of an autistic man resulting in some of the most hilarious interactions I've ever seen in my fucking life. (laughs) The Good Doctor occasionally pops up on my For You page. The one clip, I will never forget about this. This is the funniest shit. There's obviously the one that was the meme. There was the I am a surgeon thing. Yeah, Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was funny in itself. I know why it was a meme. It was funny. Uh, There was another interaction that I saw on Twitter. Uh, While the meme was spreading, they were like, that's not the only funny clip from Good Doctor. Here's this clip. And it's a clip where the good doctor is having a conversation with a child. And because he's autistic and doesn't know how to pick up social cues, he's like learning from this child. And he's like, when do you, when should you lie? And the kid's like, well, if you, if you care about somebody, if you like somebody, you should tell them the truth. And he's going through this like whole like thing about how, like, if you like somebody, uh, you should tell the truth. And he's like, and the good doctor's like, what if they don't like the truth? And then the kid is like, well, if they're your friend, then they won't like blame you or whatever. Something like that. This whole like sappy conversation. But the end of it is he just very nonchalantly, very emotionless, just says to this kid, you have cancer. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't know. Uh, the good doctor never really interests me, but Grey's Anatomy, it's getting up there. It's It's peaking. It's like... It might Grey's Anat. This is very sad to say. Grey's Anatomy might be the thing that pulls me away from the Dick Show and Biggest Problem at night. No, 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 no. It might. It might. It might. I'm sorry. It might. 
it's on Netflix too, and I have access to Netflix, so it's easy watch. Well, I guess you'll still listen to it at work, but don't do it. Maybe. We'll see about new job. I don't know if I'm allowed to listen to music during new job, so things might... You might win the bet. No! You, you but very I need well you to, but I need win, you the, the, win, the, win the goddamn bet! I don't care about winning the bet. I need you to finish so we can do the Dickheads podcast. Oh, is that public? Are we making that public? We've talked about that on the show before. Have we? I'm pretty sure I saved that till the after... The Craigbots are out of well, here. Well, whatever. There you go, folks. The, the fucking peek behind the curtain, behind the baseball. That's the plan. I think we came up with the idea on the podcast. Maybe. Anyway, we'll restart the Dickheads podcast. Um, I just, I gotta power through. I gotta power through. I'm like, I've already crossed the halfway mark. I've got two yeah. months, Riley. Two months. I want to start it. I want to start it in January. Yes. It's like a little that. new. It's like a little New Year's Fuck resolution. Fuck Grey's Anatomy. Resist your white girl urges. Fuck Grey's They're Anatomy. Strong. Strong. What Listen, if in the I next few months I... I decide to take estrogen, and then those white girl tendencies are gonna skyrocket? It's gonna be Grey's Anatomy and crying all day long. I have to resist. Listen, I have to resist too. Okay, you know how much I want to watch Better Call Saul all the time, but now I have to like. But I have to like edit the mocast all the time, and I have to fucking do my Dick of Tears run of Pokemon Heart Gold Soul Silver. Uh, so I have to not watch Better Call Saul all the time, but I really want to. <laughs> but yeah, we'll start the Dickheads podcast when I get fully caught up. Do well, yeah. Do what? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Fuck. Hiccups. God damn it. Yeah, I've been drinking. Not not drunk college you. Just brain Get not work college. Floor and sing a karaoke. We're not doing floor karaoke. Cause if I do floor karaoke again, then that memory will just be reiterated. It won't be as special. That's true. Because you did it again. It was a once in a lifetime. Thing that happened to only a select few people who remember it. You know what you have to do? You gotta keep your head up. Oh. <laughs> that was the that was the moment. That was a legendary moment in time. When we're 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 having like this fucking professional little fucking Pokemon tabletop game campaign going on. I feel like that was the moment where you knew that I was I was like, you knew I was a good fit, but once that happened, you were like, this is a lifelong podcast, friend. Right there. Right right then and there. You were like, this is it. You, you've honestly, you've always been my number one. For the moment always. I fucking met you. I, I knew it. I knew, I felt it immediately. And then solidified that when I came to you and said, so I have a podcast idea. Yeah, the thing was, you, you were like, what if we do the same thing we were doing three years ago that you wanted to keep doing, and I stopped. I wanted a little bit more structure. I wanted it to be a brand, not something just fun that we did whenever. I wanted it to be a weekly podcast that we could brand. Which it was. It which didn't is... feel like a brand. It was, and it had a name that we could brand. It was just like, we were kind of casual about it. We were like, yeah, if we like feel like doing it like more than once a week, we can. But like we had a day, and we did it every week on that day. I don't know what it is, but Detour Ahead seems like such a, such, it seems a little bit, it seems more professional. Well, yes, because we were both four years older. Yeah, I wanted it to be something I'm proud of. I tell all the people, I tell a bunch of people, yeah, I do a podcast, it's called Detour Ahead. It has cost me three dates. (laughs) Wait, did you get unmatched on Tinder because you tried to plug your podcast? No, I plugged the podcast and they checked out an episode where I'm radically right and they they oh, unmatched me. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> that's why you want to stop doing the politics on the show. Okay. No, I'm... that's why I stopped a while ago, but the floodgates are open. I don't care. Like me for who I am or I'll go find a rich daddy with a lot of money. <laughs> Go find the aspiring nurse practitioner who wants to become a doctor. <laughs> there you go, folks. There you go. Man, that was one of the other things I told Kathy. I was like, yeah, this is my goal in life, to go 
to go find a rich rich old man and just just go live my life and go have fun. But but I'm not going to get married though. I'm not going to get married cuz that I do remember. I was there for that. Yes, I was awake yes, for that. I pissed her off so much. I pissed her off after the show. So, you guys won't be able to hear this. So, here's a little behind the scenes. Okay. Uh, I pissed her off so much to where she left. She left the voice call. She said, I'm done. I'm not doing this. And she left. <laughs> wow. Wow. I felt so proud of myself that I shut her down to the point where she left. I, I thought you were about to say, I felt so bad. <laughs> no, I felt good because she didn't have a rebuttal for anything that I was saying. Because I'm pretty sure I know more about Catholicism and the Catholic Church than she does. Listen, don't don't scare my Kathy away, okay? I have to, I have to do a lot of fucking uh, tending to that lol cow to keep it from running away from the farm. No, no, no. I'm not going to, like, continuously go at her. I'm not going to go at her in her DMs or anything or scare her off. I, I love you, Kathy. We're friends. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not milking you for lols. That's a bit. That's a joke. No, I'm, not degree, going, I'm, am, not, I'm not I going after Kathy. Kathy. I'm not going after Kathy. It's when Kathy comes at me with Catholicism, but it's not correct information. Kathy, so what I will give her the right information, and what she does with it is up to her. I don't do anything maliciously. The thing about Kathy is she's gone through such a fucking transformation. So for those of you who don't know, I have like... There, there are eras of, like, where my internet friends are from. Probably the oldest friends that I still, like, regularly interact with all the time, uh, to most people's knowledge, would be, like, the Pixels people. You, and Jinji, and, like, people from that time. There is another layer. A lot of the friends from this, area, I, this era, I'm not in contact anymore, with the exception of three people. Those three people are Brad, Andrew and Kathy. What era? Wait, 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 wait. I blanked out. What what era? The before the before times. Pre pixels. Before before times. The before times. Yeah. The before times. That's right. Uh, we all met in the same Twitch chat of a Pokemon Twitch streamer named Michael the Pokemon. It was me, uh, fucking Pegasus, the, the Pe Pegasus League Live. Fucking King Lilligant, Ultima Josh, and Brad the Bad. Uh, one of those people has fully retained the same personality and the name ever since. That being, of course, Brad the Bad. He's still. We gotta get there. Brad on the pod. I'm so proud. How have we not had Brad on this podcast? We've been going well, for had, I episodes. Had, I haven't had a full conversation with Brad in like fucking ten months. <laughs> I'll fucking DM him right now. We'll get him on next week. Hell yes, but uh, uh there's Brad, and then there's. Ultima Josh, who became Andrew. Uh, Josh was just like his weird fake name. And then he started going by his real name. Uh, so that's Andrew. And then King Lilligant, uh, who was a, a boy who I knew, uh, who I won't say the dead name, obviously, but like I knew her by a different name and by a different gender for several years. Uh, we did a movie review podcast together that has her dead name in it. The, the The name of the show is the Riley and Kathy's dead name movie review podcast. So it's not that hard to find. And she has not requested for me to take those down. So they're out there. Uh, but, and the funny thing is the funny thing about Kathy is pre transition in the before times, she was like a hyper leftist. There was like no, no mention of God. I don't even think she, she believed in God back then. She was she was literally a communist. <laughs> she has gone through such a fucking transformation. I'm legitimately so there was there's this meme. And part of me is like, maybe this is unironically true, even though it's stupid and it's not. Uh, but just the meme is so accurate to how crazy it is, because so what happened? The Kathy lore is uh, Kathy was part of our friend group for a while. When the largest issue started with me and Andrew, she was a common guest. Uh, but then one day, out of nowhere, uh, well, not out of nowhere, I think there was, like, preamble to it, uh, but the, the point is, she changed her profile picture to a noose, her username to goodbye, 
And then we never heard from her again. So the assumption for over a year, probably over two years, was that she had killed herself. And it was a, a common uh, little little thing we called back to. We'd always be like, we have fi- hashtag find Kathy or, you know, the other name, but you get it. Uh, like, we got to find her, even though she's probably dead. Uh, there is a diss track that Andrew made about me where he said that I was the reason that she died. Like, there, this is a whole thing. We were fully convinced that Kathy was dead. Yeah. And then, but there was one little thing. We noticed that her name on her email had changed. We didn't know when this happened. None of us were, like, emailing her actively, so it easily could have happened before she disappeared. But her name changed from her dead name to the trans name that she used to go by. And we, so the, the theory was like, whoa, what if she's alive and she's trans? And it turned out that theory was entirely correct. Uh, and one day, she just showed up. Uh, it was right when we were ending Largest Issue. Uh, it was episode uh, 108, the episode that Dick Masterson was on. Between 107 and 108, uh, we got a comment. Uh, we got a comment on 107 from a, an account that we had never seen before that said, Hey, wow, I can't believe this show is ending. I'm the one who made the logo for the show. If you want to get back in contact, Riley, just reply to this comment. Now, you know who made the logo for Largest Issue in the Galaxy? Kathy. <laughs> so we were like, wait a fucking minute. and we That's we, crazy. We, yeah. See, I never did any, like, surprise shit like that. I just showed up one day and just texted you, Hey, buddy, what's up? <laughs> just out of fucking nowhere. After, like, a year of being MIA. Yeah, she, she made us fully convinced that she killed herself. Uh, and... She just showed back up. And Demi Demi Gloom was like weirdly starstruck because like the thing, the thing was Demi Gloom came like right as Kathy left. And she was Demi Gloom started as a fan. She listened to largest issue in the galaxy. So she knew who Kathy was. She really liked Kathy on the show. Well, that's how I was when, when I started, uh, when I came on pixels, I, you, you hit me up and I was like, Th- this is crazy. I've never done a podcast before. I don't know what to do. This is kind of like this. It was like starstruck, basically. I know, but Demi Gloom. The thing was, yeah, Demi Gloom was already a part of the show at this point. But but see, I had listened and I had found your show without even knowing who you yeah. were. That's what happened with Demi Gloom years later. Yeah, she, you, you found Pokemon Variety Hour. She found Largest Issue in the Galaxy. Uh, same thing. Uh, but she found us. And became a part of our circle right as Kathy left. So she was like a fan of Kathy. She liked Kathy because she had heard her on the show and she liked what she was saying and thought she was funny. Uh, she was like one of her favorite recurring guests on the show. And we had always like we we talked about Kathy. We joked about Kathy. We did. There was a meme where we were like Demi Gloom is, was secretly Kathy all along. Uh, <laughs> it was always like a little joke. And then Kathy shows back up. And Demi Gloom is like weirdly starstruck that she finally gets to meet her. <laughs> That's wild. And now they have one of the most interesting love hate relationships I've ever seen. It's so crazy how deep Kathy got into the fucking Catholicism. I want to know what happened. What was the trigger for that? I feel like I got to ask her. I want, I want to do a podcast with her. I should hit her up because she probably would to do this. I want to go into her DMs and be like, hey, let's do a podcast where you try to convince me to become Catholic. Are you not Catholic? Were you baptized? I was baptized and I was raised Catholic, but I am currently, uh, I would describe myself as agnostic because I don't know, I I believe there has to be some sort of higher power, but I don't believe a word of the fucking Bible. That's fair. That's understandable. We'll see. We'll see about bringing Kathy back on. I'm, after after cool. doing the issue crew, I'm a little bit more open to it. Now that I know like the interaction will be, what the interaction will be. Um 
Yeah, because we had her on. I mean, we had her on. I the have to prepare for episode. something like that. It's pretty good. I have to prepare myself for something like that for someone <laughs> who's not going to stay on a topic that we pick. There was little to no. Well, I mean, there was little to no God talk during evolutionary well, that was, biology. That wasn't Kathy. Kathy. Well, it was. She was going by a different name at the time, but it was still trans Kathy who's super into Catholicism. Not back then. That was a year she ago. Was she was into Catholicism then too? Really? Yeah. See, I've never heard any of these stories. That's crazy because I was super involved in just Kathy PVH. Came back. Uh, Kathy came back, and by that point, by the, PVH. Time, by the time she came back into our lives, she was a trans woman, and she was super Catholic. Huh. Okay. Okay. I'd have to go re-listen to the episode. I don't know. Hey, are you picking up any background noise from my end, by the way? Uh, when you're talking, uh, just now I heard it, but I haven't heard it before now. Like, what's the background noise? It's like some rubbing of some sort. Oh, okay, good. Um, Yeah, okay, I just want to make sure. People are yelling upstairs, so I want to make sure that's isolated and not my microphone's yeah, no, not picking that up. I don't hear the yelling of the, the people upstairs. Okay. Um, we've been going for about an hour and 40 minutes. Would you like to wrap up? Sure. Unless you have anything more to say. I know this is kind of like in the middle of the topic, but I don't really know what else to talk about. So no, we, we reached the end of that topic. I think we're good. Okay. Riley, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me in my link tree, linktr.ee slash Riley Cinematic Universe is in the description. There's cool stuff on there, podcasts and shows and stuff. Always. Darn... Always in the description. Every single episode. Always. True. Go there. Get podcasts. Get the issue crew. Pretty good. Yeah. That's it. You can find me on, you if you haven't already, you can find me on YouTube as Colochu, C-O-L-O-C-H-U. Uh, you can also support me and Riley on the Patreon at patreon.com slash Colochu. We talked about this last week, homie. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, Patreon. <laughs> if you donate to the Colochu Patreon, Riley, do you have a Patreon? No. Okay. If you donate to the Cold Chew Patreon, 50% of your donation per month will go to Riley if you tell me that you listen to Detour Ahead. You see, I, I would not extend that same kindness, because I feel like if you're going to do that, you would just start a separate Patreon for the show. I should, but then <laughs> Cold Chew won't get any money. So Fair. Besides, there's already money sitting in the Cold Chew Patreon, so... <laughs> just, just sitting there. To be Look, playing. setting up a whole brand new Patreon is is a lot. I should probably set up patreon.com slash detour ahead. I had a Patreon. I had a patreon.com slash Riley. Uh, but there was like changes to Patreon's like terms of service and that caused it to get like auto taken down for like pending of changing a setting. Um, and I just never put it back up because it wasn't really doing anything anyway. Gotcha, gotcha. So until patreon.com slash detour ahead is up, go to patreon.com slash if you donate a dollar and you say, I listen to Detour Ahead, whether it's a DM to me, a Discord, or anything, doesn't, it doesn't matter. If you donate a dollar, 50% will go to Riley as long as you listen to the show. That seems wow. fair. 50% of that dollar will go and support Riley. Well, there you go. Thank you for listening to Detour Ahead. I've been Riley. Been Alex. And we'll see you next week.